I've talked about how potential is the work done to bring unit mass or charge from infinity to a point. And by the way, the unit for gravitational potential is joules per kilogram since it's, it's work done per unit mass but the unit for electric potential uh, is work done per unit charge so it, it would be joules per coulomb now but for electric potential another name is more commonly used it's the volt represented by the symbol V okay, so V is volt V O L T that's the more familiar unit now I, I want to talk about now something about plotting sketching graphs of these um, potentials so let's have a look now suppose that I have um, the earth down here so that's earth Now I think of, um, let's say, the center of the Earth as the origin, and I think of uh, an axis, say um, the x-axis, I'll just call this the x-axis, and I think of the vertical axis as, say, the, the potential, I think of this as the gravitational potential as, as the vertical axis. So, if I want to sketch a graph of the of, of the gra uh, gravitational potential against this, um, say, displacement x from the center of the Earth, what would it look like? Now, let's recall the formula. Let me write down the formula for gravitational potential. Again, it's minus g m over r, where um, m is the mass of Earth. Now I've I've taken this, I've called this the x-axis. So, uh, in 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 this, at least in this case, uh, the the value of x would be the same as the value of r. Okay, what would be a graph of this look like? Uh, if you look at this formula, as far as the graph is concerned, it is only the x or, or the r that we're going to change. Right? Earth is still the same earth, the mass doesn't change. Big G is uh, constant, doesn't change when, when you change the value of x or, or the position that you want to look at. So r is the only thing that changes. Now to to um, make it easier to think about the graph, let's let's take a look at what this graph looks like. This graph that goes y equals to one over x. So this is basically the same form as this formula, except for the constant g over m. We have basically one over r down here, just like the one over x. Here. Now, if you've seen this graph before, you know that it looks like this. If I, this is the y-axis, and this is the x-axis. Okay, then the graph looks like this. There's a curve here on top, and there's a curve there. You know, and the reason why it looks like this is that when x 
gets very big. 1 over a very very big number will give you a very small answer, which is why as you go to the right, x becomes bigger, so y becomes smaller. On the other hand, if x becomes small, meaning that as, as x goes to 0, that's, that's 0, that's the origin, as x gets smaller and smaller, closer and closer to 0, 1 over a very small number gives you a very big answer. So that's why the curve goes higher and higher up as x goes to 0. Now on the other side, it's just symmetrical except that um, x would have a negative value. So that's why the curve is below the x-axis. So with this, once we know this curve, uh, we'll find it easier to try and sketch a curve um, with this function, with, with the Earth's, for, for the Earth's potential. So let's have a look. Now, because of this form, because I have something over r, it's like 1 over x, I would expect a curve that looks like this. Okay, I would expect that if I plot a graph against r, it should look like this. Except that, except that I have a minus sign here. So the effect of the minus sign, for example, if, if I have a minus sign here, my value of y would be negative. So instead of there, the curve would be there. Okay, so let, let me just sketch this. So whereas this curve here is, is, is for 1 over x, if I have minus 1 over x, the curve would be down here. That's for minus 1 over x. So because of the minus sign, I would expect that the graph that I want to draw here would actually actually look like this. So let me sketch this now. So I would expect that the graph of this potential would look like this. Okay, look like a curve like this. Um, now according to this graph, it should just go further and further down as x gets closer and closer to 0. So it looks like I should draw this going more and more negative until maybe it goes to negative infinity. But in fact, it doesn't happen. The reason is because this formula, this formula is strictly true only when we have what is called a point mass, meaning a, a, a mass that has zero size or zero radius. Okay, so it's a theoretical uh, idea, if you like. But of course, of course, this is not true when we talk about Earth, right? unless we talk about, about a black hole, maybe. But if, if you're talking about Earth, Earth does not have a zero size. Earth is it's huge, and but we can still use this formula, okay, as long as Earth is a spherical object, or if we are quite far from Earth, we can still use use this formula, except that we can only use this formula when we are above the Earth's surface. Okay, so if we start making a tunnel and going into the center of the Earth, or even underground, we can't exactly use this formula anymore. It has to be changed. Right, but I shan't I shan't go into that. So instead what I'll I'll just say here is that I can't use this formula when I tunnel into when I dig a hole and go, go into the earth. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm going to stop the graph here. Okay I'm just gonna stop the graph at the earth's surface. Okay, maybe we'll learn about what happens inside the Earth uh, next time. But for now, this is fine. This is this is uh, all I want to show for this example. Now, next I want to look at the corresponding 
graph for electric potential. So suppose that I have a I have a glass ball down here, and that this glass ball has let's say a negative charge. I'll use a negative charge because it tends to look more like the tends to be more more similar like to to the gravitational potential which has a minus sign. Okay, so let's start. Suppose now that I want to um, plot a graph of this electric potential. So let's say this is the this is the x-axis. Okay, very good. Right, that's that's the x-axis and that's the axis for the electric potential V. Okay, and the formula, the formula for electric potential that we know is V equals to now we need a, a symbol for the charge. Let me call this Q. So it's Q over um, 4 pi epsilon naught R. Where in this case the displacement of x in the positive direction happens to be equal to R. But because the charge is negative, so the Q there is actually a negative number. All right. So it would be like having a minus sign. And because it's a negative number, it, since R is the only thing that changes in this formula, Q 4 pi epsilon naught constants, just like GM, we would therefore expect the graph of V against R to look very similar to the to the gravitational potential graph of uh, this potential against R. So I can therefore just copy over this curve here. Okay, so let me do that. And once again, I shan't go into the glass ball if things get a bit more complicated. I'll just stop short of the surface and The graph would then look like this. Right? Just the same as the gravitational potential graph with a minus sign. Okay. But in the case of the electric potential, uh, we can also have a positive charge. We can also have a positive charge. So if the charge is positive, let me draw, sketch that graph as well. The charge is positive. What would the graph look like? Okay, let's say that's the x-axis. That is the v-axis. And it's the same formula, except that this time, the Q, we want the Q to be positive. Alright. So if the Q is positive, the graph, instead of be, being below the x-axis, would be above the x-axis. right? And, and the shape will be just symmetrical. So let me draw that. Once again, I'll stop at the surface of the ball. And the graph should look like this. Right. Not a very nice curve, but you get the idea. So that's for the graph of um, of the electric potential would look like when we have a sphere that has electrical charges.